The wolf is our protector, your spirit animal. Because in your heart, you're part wolf too. But carrying the wolf is a burden. comes back, it's in a place where there normally should not be wolves, so something's up. Casey, whatever you do, don't shoot it. Well, if it gets near my horses, I'm shooting If it goes near your horses, it's a test. And if you shoot it, you fail. Casey carries so much trauma for most of his life, and Casey's done a lot of killing. It'll affect you, and he knows just enough that there's a connection to it, but he doesn't know quite what it is. And that's when he comes to Rainwater and Mo, which leads to recommending that he do the ceremony to give himself answers, not for anyone else. You'll have to ask the wolf. How do I do that? I'll bless you. Cry for a vision. It's one of the most arduous and challenging journeys that somebody can take. But there's a purifying and a cleansing of stripping all your thoughts to be distilled down to the simplest form of who you actually are, who you really are. And that discovery can change your life. Gotta be honest. Not sure I believe in all this. It sure believes in you. Mo, in his actual life, is very much tied into these spiritual traditions of his people. He's an invaluable asset because we know that we're doing it right and that we're doing it respectfully. Listen, Mo. Do what he says exactly as he says it. She knows these are conditions the Native people have lived with for centuries, and this is the healing powers that they have. On that ride there, for me, emotionally, I was really going to that, what we consider a sacred place. What will come to you depends on how hard you pray and how much you suffer. It's spot on. There's a true battle that goes on within us. That place is where we begin to find ourselves. Thank you, here we go, and action. The armed robbery interrupted by former Livestock Commissioner John Dutton would have certainly led to a greater loss of innocent life had he not intervened. This is yet another moment to remind him of embarrassment and inadequacies. It just feels like John is now turned into enemy number one for Jamie. Looks good. Looks good. Looks good. His natural born father, he's a complicated person. He's a threat. Last time I saw you, the judge gave you life. Guess life don't mean what it used to, does it? For Jamie, there's this, there's this chance to find his center, but it's of a person that's um, of, a, of a low character. I spent 30 years inside a concrete box. It was good to see Will on the set. And he's just a fantastic actor. and. He brings so much. He's very dynamic in his own way, formidable and uh, detailed. You could have told them what she'd become. She became what you made her. Then you killed her for it. Even though Summer and John are on different sides of the issues, they both agree that an airport shouldn't be built next to Yellowstone National Park. I should have never listened to your daughter. What do you mean? Beth thought in a way that she was just going to use her a little bit, but it's turned much more dramatic, and she's in fact, you know, facing um, having her life altered forever. This was Beth's idea. It wasn't my idea to slap the first cop I saw. It was hers. He feels an obligation to try to fix that. Beth does not, and I think rightly so. We have a conversation about that. We're eating in the dining room tonight. Why are we eating in the dining room? Because I like eating in here, but you and I are going to like this dinner. So Beth fights dirty, and of course, her father doesn't like that. So she comes up against him. Have a seat. I fight standing. 
As long as she can protect her father and the ranch, she doesn't. She says it, I don't care. I do anything to hurt our enemies, Dad. If I hurt others, so be it. We fight with dignity, you are. You start or find another fight. What does that mean? I voice a level of disappointment with her, which is, which is terrible for her to hear. I find it, you know, it was important that I say it to her. It's a really difficult moment for her, that rejection, because she's doing it all for him. It just touches her, her the most vulnerable, weakest spot in her. And it's just so painful. You know, maybe it's best if I fight this alone. Maybe it's best if you go somewhere else while I do it. This is my home. Might be time to find another one. He's done this before. It's my first time. Uh, you've been shuffling the cards in the air. In the bunkhouse, you can sort of just let free and do whatever the hell you want. No, I ain't no kid. It's just a motherfucking card shark and a little elf. Yeah, you tell him. <laughs> she was great at improvising. Every single take, she was doing a different thing to say to me. Cheating little squirrely haired little twat mouth cunt motherfucking <laughs> face dick nose. I threw every dirty word that I knew at him. Uh, with the intention of shocking him and horrifying his mother, who was just off camera. What's wrong with her? What do you mean? She bought off her tongue or something. Because <laughs> <laughs> just Jen, I just got along really well with that kid. He's great. I love her. She's she's a really nice lady. From where it started with Carter and Rip to where it ends up, you know, um, I think it's just a moment where you see Rip being really supportive of Carter and, and acknowledging that this kid has, you know, some talent when it comes to cards. I love it. You know what he has? He's a bit of a hustler. Rip likes that about him. It's a nice moment for, for Carter as well. I mean, he's looking back at me and seeing that I'm proud of him and that he's whipping everybody's ass. So it's a, it's a great moment for them. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Same exact cards last time. Oh, but it was a it was a difficult moment to shoot. Do you know what he says? Huh? Most people say it's all I know. <laughs> Would you play one for me? <laughs> to have that moment with him, she couldn't share that moment of grief with Rip. It's almost like she doesn't want Rip to see that. And for her to truly go there and for her to truly feel it, it has to be with someone who's experienced it and can almost allow, just allow the space for it. I'm capable of crying for myself, Walker. You need a song to cry to. That was pretty intense, you know? It's always great doing scenes with Kelly and I never know where any of that stuff's gonna go till I get there. Yeah, it was definitely, definitely tough to play a song like that. It was a song that, uh, that Taylor chose. It's an old song I wrote a few years ago, and he said that he'd been kind of trying to find a place to use it somewhere in the show, and that was just kind of what he envisioned and what he was hearing there. As anything with her, with Beth, it's all or nothing. And I know when I have to do scenes like that, it's got to be all of me. How does an act, how do you do that? How do you, how do this character that's so contained and so strong, how do then suddenly we release that? I'm so connected to her. She's so real to me. I care so much about her. her it's her pain that drives her. I just, um, so I couldn't shy away from that, that scene. I felt like Walker kind of was going in this other direction and then all of a sudden he gets kind of pulled back into that triangle of Beth and Rip and, you know, I don't know, to be honest, I don't want to get on Rip's bad side too often. Things are starting to go pretty good, you know, so <laughs> I hope he doesn't get too upset. Yeah.